Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelove and this is Speedplay Togurt number 11. As we have been doing, we shall continue to do, we will launch more wars against the countries of Southeast Asia and fight all of the rebelling peoples as they rise up against our, uh, essentially just, just pillaging of the entire region. Meanwhile, we also get events related to our trade companies, which are probably going to last us for the rest of the game, as I can't see us getting rid of these trade companies. And we go ahead and declare our newest war, marching bravely into the Asian landmass, even further than the peninsula that we've been more or less sticking to thus far. We split our forces up in order to go ahead and just carpet siege the region. I don't really anticipate any uh, concern with the enemy army, as we are significantly more advanced than they are. And realistically, I don't really think that we have anything to worry about from them. So we just go ahead and march back and forth a few times, chasing their army down and not actually destroying it quite yet, but then destroying it and just fighting off the armies that come up. We've nearly finished our colonization of Australia, so we're gonna go ahead and finish that. There's also a rebellion, which we managed to avoid losing all of our troops against, so that's good. And we also begin to get an amazing event, which gives us a lot of ducats. We go ahead and finish the war, adding all of the regions that we've conquered into our East Indian Trade Company, but not anywhere else. And we just go ahead and continue where we've been, more or less. There are another series of rebellions which we're going to have to go and fight, as well as another one of those events that gives us a lot of gold. Ultimately, a lot of very good things are going on for our country at this point. We are getting most, although not all, of the merchants for all of our colonial regions and trade companies, so that's pretty good. We go ahead and declare another war and fight a few large battles as our enemies actually go ahead and have the gall to invade us, which is something a little unseen in recent wars, but it looks as though it's going to be a bit more of the same with us just marching across and hopefully just defeating all the armies where they show up. Admittedly, at this point they're getting a little bit of an edge on us as they are actually forced marching their armies. We do, however, have a decent control of the area, and at this point I am noticing that we've gone through quite a bit of our manpower, so I do attempt to prevent any rebellions from coming up in the future. And our battles are going fairly well at this point, which is great news. We're finally just beginning to let the enemy attack us, or attack the other enemy that they're fighting, and just spread out and lay siege to separate areas. So it looks as though we will be able to set up a safe zone, and just fight their armies on the periphery of it. Ideally, we'll be able to just destroy their entire fighting force, but we haven't had very much luck with that. The Ottomans call us to arms, and we just go ahead and accept, as it isn't really against anyone important. And unfortunately our heir died, but he wasn't that good of an heir, so it's not actually too unfortunate whatsoever. We continue roving around with our army, attempting to destroy the enemy armies wherever possible, and mainly just keep them from sieging any of our provinces. At this point in the war, we've essentially won. Our manpower is significantly lower than it was at the beginning of this war, so once we're able to peace out with this country, we should probably try to cool things down a little bit in order to restore the one resource we're actually lacking, which is going to end up being our manpower. And we do have another rebellion, which kind of flies right in the face of our attempt to preserve our manpower, but there's not very much we can do. And we do get some of the more unfortunate events for our trade companies. We begin to pull our forces, whatever we can spare, in order to build up a force to defeat the rebels before they can occupy the uh, two provinces. They already do occupy one. 
And ultimately this war is drawing to a close. It was a little more costly and less efficient than I had hoped it would be. But it's gone well in the end, and we did defeat the rebellion with only one province lost. Unfortunately, we are now at war with the Spanish Empire. We aren't going to quite just make peace with the nations we're already at war at, or at war with, but we are definitely going to have to shift our focus to the next war. Which means probably just going ahead and occupying Brunei and uh, getting our trade fleet to safety. Beyond that, we don't really have to worry about North America and we'll just make peace with the countries in Southeast Asia that we've been at war with. We'll get 100% overextension, and go ahead and just add the whole place to our newest trade company, which will, if we are lucky, be able to get its own merchant in just a moment. And from there, we go ahead and invade the Spanish holdings near us, we finish a colony and go ahead and spread into Siberia because if we don't do it, the Spanish will, and I don't want to fight them in Siberia. We also did get our merchants, so we go ahead and add them. And we send our forces over to just carpet siege. The siege against the rebel held province is over, and we do manage to get into a naval battle, but we escape without losing any transports, and we win the subsequent engagement. With that all done, we go ahead and drop our forces to complete the carpet sieges. And that's essentially all we have to worry about about the Spanish. Our colonial nations are doing their job, keeping it so that we don't have to worry. We do have another significant rebellion going on, which uh, once again is draining the manpower. I've been treating it like it was an infinite resource, and that was definitely a mistake. At this point, our manpower is the primary concern for our entire empire. We have a really good ruler, so we don't have to worry very much about our points, uh, whether they be admin, diplo, or military. We're actually fully caught up militarily. We have a ways to go with the admin and diplo tech levels, but as it stands, we're in a pretty good spot. And I do end up declaring another war because, quite frankly, I don't think this war is going to end very soon. And I want to be at least as close to constantly coring things as possible. With our extra military points, I do go ahead and start building military buildings in order to build up our manpower reserves by at least a little bit. And meanwhile, the sieges have nearly completed. We do defeat the rebels. And it's a matter of just seeing what we can get from the Spanish. Quite frankly, I think the war has kind of bogged down, at least in the New World, which I'm not paying too much attention to. And we've gotten all that we really want over here. We could maybe get some lands, but not enough to connect our colonial nations, so I won't really want to bother with that. Ultimately though, we're in an alright spot. The war is essentially won without very much effort on our part, which is really the best way that these wars with European powers could go, and that's basically all I had ever hoped for with our colonial nations. Now it will take around 98% of our overextension to take the entire island, and a full war that we don't actually have the willpower here to fight. So we take what we can get relatively cheaply without having to do very much work, as when we do turn against the Europeans, I want to turn in full force. We're still fighting the Southeast Asians right now, and in the ideal world, I'll be able to build up as much strength as is possible, destroying these significantly weaker Southeast Asian nations. And the previous war in the uh, Vietnam region really did show how bogged down we can get. Meanwhile, our colony in Siberia is coming along nicely and really just does add a lot of visibility to our map, or our map control. And we're going to go ahead and take out the remaining independent nations in the uh, island chains off of Southeast Asia. We do integrate Malacca. And go ahead and move over to the islands over here where we can just bring our heavy ships and just destroy their armies and wait. 
And it does appear as though we are actually at war with Brunei as well, which I didn't actually realize we would be. I brought a force up north so that we could invade the uh, Siberian area. However, with another rebellion, we do have to bring our forces back. It is a bit unfortunate that we have to fight off our own people this frequently. In an ideal world, it would happen much less often, or we wouldn't have to worry about our manpower nearly as much. I realized that we were at full military points, so I go ahead and just suppress a few regions. As really we're not hurting for the manpower, or we're not hurting for the military points, but we are hurting for the manpower. So at this point, it's a fairly decent trade-off. I probably should have picked a military idea last, which would have allowed us to get something such as quality in order to prevent our troops from dying in the first place, and thus beat our manpower shortages on the other end. As it stands, though, we've been using all of our admin points for coring. So we really haven't had the opportunity to uh, get another idea group. And as such, we've kind of trapped ourselves in this infinite series of wars. But it isn't too bad. We will be able to annex at least two countries and at least take a bit from Brunei. I didn't realize that they had this island off to their northern section, so we're just going to go ahead and invade that now. Meanwhile, we can build a very nice building that'll get us a lot of extra manpower, as well as a few of the buildings that cost 1,000 gold for the large buffs. As you really can't go wrong with massive buffs. We do have another rebellion, which is quite unfortunate, and it doesn't look as though we have enough troops nearby, which seems to be the way that this always goes. Although we do try, and it looks as though we are able to win the battle. And there is just one other battle we'll end up having to fight. Luckily, I do realize that we have an army over in Southeast Asia's mainland, so we can just go over and pick that up. And with that said and done, we go ahead and move our army over, and we very narrowly defeat them before they can seize the province. And while we're at it, we may as well invade in Northern Asia, in Siberia. And we go ahead and begin making peace in the island chains off of Southeast Asia in order to just finish off these countries and hopefully we'll be able to turn our focus away in the near future. As there really aren't very many countries left to invade in this island chain, there's going to be a small part of Brunei, but the rest of the area we can just go ahead and integrate. And now it's just a matter of setting up colonies before the Europeans do and hopefully just cutting the Europeans out of everywhere that we can. And at least half of cutting the Europeans out of what remains is going to be fighting them. We do go ahead and begin to colonize. And at this rate, it looks as though the Ottomans do make their peace deal, and I noticed that we could probably go after the islands around Italy. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and tell a friend.